Thank you. God bless you while you're standing. I'd like to go to the word of the Lord. Thank God. And normally I read my text and then I give the title. But today I wanted to set the stage for what I want to preach about with the title today. And so I just kind of wanted you to have this thought in mind while we're reading the scriptures today. But when men step up, thank God, it's what I want to preach about today. When men step up, thank you, good things happen. He's God. And so that's what I'm going to be praying today is that every man that's in this building today will understand how important you are in God's plan for the family. Thank God. When God designed the family, he put the man in a position that if he will fulfill his role, then everything else is going to go so much better for the family. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen yet, Moved with fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house. Thank God. And that's the part I like. Because it wasn't just about Noah, but it was about his whole house. And by the which condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Thank God. Noah was the only man that stepped up. Thank God. But he saved his family. Joshua chapter 24 and verse number 15. And if it seemeth evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Thank God. Joshua stepped up and he said, thank God, the same God that Noah served is the same God that I'm serving. Thank God. What happened to all those that didn't follow Noah's God? Thank God. They were destroyed. And here we are in these Amorites' land. God gave it to us, and yet and still you're wanting to worship their gods when our God has showed you that he is mightier than them. Thank God. And so Joshua stepped up. Daniel chapter 3 and verse number 11, first last scripture reading. And whosoever falleth not down and worship that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And when there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the, the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee or served uh, and served not thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they brought them these men before the king. Thank God. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do you uh, not serve my God, nor worship the golden image which I have set before you? Thank God. And this is what I like about these three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said unto the king, O king Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be that our God whom we serve is able to deliver us out of the fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hands, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, we will not serve thy God nor worship the golden image which is in thy house set before us. Thank God. And so, men stepping up. Thank God. Let's just pray. God, we love you. Pray for your anointing to come today. I believe that you want us to challenge every man that's here today. Pray your anointing to be upon us and you to use the word of the Lord to change somebody's life today. In Jesus' name. Thank God. We give you the praise. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank God. And so when men step up, good things happen. And so my burden today is to, to challenge you to become a man after God's own heart. And David was the, the first man that was described in that way as a man after God's own heart. And from the, the start, it um, bring, made it very clear. God doesn't look at things the way that man looks at them. Man looks on the outward appearance. But God looks at the heart. And as you look at David's life, he was um, from... Far from perfect, thank God. He was a man that had feet of clay, praise God. He made a lot of mistakes. The only explanation for all of that is, is the grace of God, thank God. And the fact that David didn't deserve all the blessings that God gave him, but in his heart, he had a right heart. There was something about his heart that longed to follow after God, even though he made his mistakes. So God doesn't look for perfection. God doesn't even expect perfection out of us. Thank God. But we can clearly see from David but what God is looking for and what God looks at is how it is in your heart, where, where that heart is. Thank God. And so it's clear that, um, you know, our day, but 
just as David, you know, he stepped up at the right time. There was something in his heart that God looked for men that are at the hour that at crisis hours is willing to step up and make a difference in the situations and wherever they're they're being challenged at. And when we look at our world today, it's clear that our world is in a crisis and we need men that will suit up and that will show up and just say, hey, I'm going to give it my best shot. Thank God, because everything is on the line. Thank God. We need to understand that we're living in the last of the last days. Thank God. And we need real men to show up and to understand that it's time to take a stand for what's right. Because the only hope for this generation is that men, thank God, that are led by God, thank God, will start leading their families. Thank God. And so it's clear that in crisis times, crisis demands that men, thank God, take their rightful place in the family. Because if they don't, then the family suffers, thank God. And there's more to being a, a father than just bringing home the bacon, as the old saying is. You know, some men feel like, well, as long as I pay the bills and, and keep food on the table, and I've done my part. But I'm telling you, there's a lot more to being a father than that. And so today we uh, see a, a lack of understanding of what real manhood is. And one of the reasons is because of the lack of just good, strong men role models in the home. And more and more young men are being brought up in homes with a, without a father. Thank God. And then they tell me, I don't know, but they tell me that on television and the movies, thank God, that they portray men as either being dumb or insensitive or just beer drinking or just uh, getting mad and throwing things. And I don't know what the real image is out there, but uh, when I walk down the streets and I see some of the um, images that men have, I can uh, just only wonder what children are being uh, shown at home and things. Because when you look at uh, so many of the men that are fathering children, so many of them, uh, they don't even get married. They don't really take the responsibilities of um, caring for their children and committed to helping to the raising of their children. And they do, um, uh, if, when they do try to do that, they are not always that great of a role model because the truth of the matter is, is that what parents, so many parents fail to realize is that most of your teaching is by example. Thank God. Most parents don't want their children to grow up like them. Thank God. And so they say, do as I say and not as I do. So don't smoke and don't drink and don't do drugs. Thank God. But they do all of those things in front of their children and then wonder why that they're having to deal with children that are making bad choices. But the truth is, is that your example is the most important thing that you can leave your children. Thank God. And it's clear what we need is for some real men to step up and to say, thank God, what Joshua said. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Praise God. I'm going to be doing everything I can to help you to follow after him and God. And so as our world deals with the crisis that it is in today, thank God, we ever need men that can step up and that can lead the way because crisis demands leadership and God and God designed that men should lead. And so today I want to challenge every man Thank God that it's what Joshua did. Thank God when he saw the people were beginning to turn towards the gods that were around them and began to slack up on the things of God. Thank God that's when he stepped up and said, I don't know what you're going to do, but I know what we're going to do. We're going to serve the Lord that brought us here, the God that brought us out and that he can keep us on. And so today I want to challenge you men to understand that you need to make choices because your choices are going to affect the choices of those that follow behind you thank god and so if men will give clear direction thank god they're going to see some good things happen in their lives thank god you need to say um not in this house thank god not at this time thank god we're going to do things the way that the word of god says to do things and so thank you for having come today and somewhere that I pray that I can remind you that you're on the right track. Thank God. And I know that sometimes it's hard because, you know, your children are saying, well, everybody else is doing it. Thank God. But the truth of the matter is, is that, um, and sometimes we feel the pressure because we think, well, you know, they really is, uh, everybody else is doing it. 
But just think if you had lived in Noah's day, thank God, when God spoke to him and said, I'm going to destroy the world with a flood. I want you to build a boat. Thank God. And you went to church. And every time you went to church, it was just eight people at church. Thank God. And you heard the same sermon from your daddy. And he preached the same message to you. And for 120 years, they worked on a boat. Thank God. Everybody else was living it up. Everybody else was having a good time. Everybody was working, um, doing their own thing. And we were, they were working on a boat. Thank God. But there came a day when it paid off. And that's when the rain began to fall. Thank God. And God said, get in the ark. And they were saved from the flood. Thank God. And one of these days, it's going to really count. Because when the rapture takes place and we leave this old world and God's wrath begins to be poured out upon it, you're going to be so glad that Daddy built a boat. You're going to be so glad that Daddy said, hey, you need to get in the church. You need to live for God because it's getting late. Thank God. We need some men like the three Hebrew boys that said, said it like this. Oh, King, we're not careful to answer you. Thank God. We know what we're going to do. Thank God. Our mind is made up. Thank God. And so they just said, thank God, do whatever you have to do. Thank God. But really and truly, you don't even have to play the music again. We're, we're fixed. Our heart's set. You can just do what you want to do. But I'm telling you, what happened for those three Hebrew boys will happen for you. If you will lead your family, there will come a day. Thank God. When everything looks like you just don't know how you're going to hold it all together. Praise God. Just don't know how you're going to make it through the fire furnace. But the fourth man's going to show up. Thank God. He always shows up. Thank God. When you put your trust in God, he always shows up. He always gives you, thank God, the strength to make it through the day. Thank God. There's a lot of tears that you won't have to shed if you will set your children and your family on the right path. Praise God. There are people today that's shedding a lot of tears because uh, they didn't uh, train up their children in the ways that they should go. And I know that no matter how much you train them, they still have their own mind and own will. But you have that deep satisfaction that I, I showed them the way. I told them what they needed to do. I brought them into the presence of God. And so sometimes we just have to accept that if they don't make the right choices, but at least I gave them the privilege of making the right choices. And so the best way to do that is to be an example, thank God, of what uh, you want them to be. If you don't want some uh, son-in-law... Uh, hitting around on your daughter, thank God, then don't hit around on their mother. Because some girls grow up just thinking that's the way it's supposed to be, you know. That's just the way men do, thank God. But if you don't want that to happen, thank God, to your daughter, thank God, then you need to treat their mother like that. You need to treat your family the way that you want them to be treated by those that uh, come into their lives in the future. And for them to know that, hey, that's not the way it's supposed to be. That's not the way Daddy taught me it's going to be around here. Praise God, that's not going to happen to me. Because that's not the way it's supposed to be. And somewhere we need to be examples and we need to train them so that they will know. Thank God, when God gets in your family, there are some things that's going to change. Praise God. And that's the beauty of getting God in your family. Today, that's my prayer. It's some way that I could help someone that maybe God hasn't been the, the, the author and the finisher of your family right now. But some way that I could challenge you to be let him become the, the head of your house. Thank God. God will change the way that you talk to your family. Thank God. God will change the, the things that you do as a family. Thank God. God will change, thank God, your priorities as a family. Thank God. Material things really won't be the most important thing to your family. Thank God. Your job won't be the most important thing. You'll understand that, hey, there's more to life than just the, the substance and the things that I can get and the things that we can hold on to. There's so many that are missing so much that God has for them because they think that I've got to do it. But I'm telling you, if you let God add these things to you, he said, seek first the kingdom of God. I'll give you what you need. Praise God. You don't have to get uh, greedy. You don't have to get to reaching for things. Thank God. God wants to, there to be peace in your home. Thank God. He wants there to be harmony in your home. Thank God. And as you begin to seek first the things of God, God begins to become a part of everything that begins to happen in the home. Thank God. And one of the things that he promised us is peace and joy and happiness in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And it doesn't happen instantly. And so I'm not promising you today, if you come down here and get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that tomorrow it's going to be perfect. But I am promising you this one thing. If you'll walk with him, thank God, things are going to begin to change and your life is going to begin to take on a whole new meaning. Praise God. And so... Thank God, there are times that we drop the ball. Thank God, there's times that uh, we uh, 
don't walk in the spirit. And so we find ourselves battling the same things that neighbors battle. But there's something about the presence of God that keeps drawing us back and saying, hey, you, you, you're not doing it right. But if you'll do it right, it'll get better. Praise God. And so there's struggles. But there is something that says it's better than it was. Thank God. And it's only going to get better as I get closer and walk more in harmony with the things of God. And so in the military, they have some people that are called special forces. And you don't get to wear that label unless you have uh, gone through some very rigorous, uh, intense training to be able to be a part of the special forces. Thank God. There are men that go behind. The, these are the men that uh, train to uh, an extent that seems almost inhuman that a person could even endure what these men endure. But their whole purpose is that they need, there are special needs. Thank God they require special missions that require special men to do those things. And one of their great challenges is to go behind when a, a comrade has been captured by the enemy is to go behind the enemy lines and to try to rescue uh, a prisoner and to try to go into uh, situations that uh, they're the only one there and they're trying to create a path so that those that are coming on can be able to find their way into where the enemy's weaknesses are and things and these special forces they got are very uh, important in our in our military ranks and that is what when you read the bible you read about special men thank god and the reason they were special is because they learned how to walk in the Spirit. They learned how to hear the voice of God. And they learned how to respond to the voice of God. And today, I want to challenge you to understand that there is a voice that will speak to you in every situation. Be it a family situation. Be it a financial decision. Be it whatever decisions you're trying to make. If you will seek God. It's amazing how that He can guide you. So what God looks for, thank God, is a heart. Thank God that is towards him, a man after his heart that has a passion for his purpose, that's willing to lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily and distract him. Thank God. And just say, thank God, whatever your will is, not my will, but thy will be done. Thank God. All God needs, thank God, in a crisis is for someone to step up. Like David, when no one else would go and fight the giant. David said, thank God, I'll go. And somewhere God just looks for that man. So today it's no different. Thank God, there are giants that we need to take down. There are giants that we need to conquer. And the only way we're going to conquer that is to say, thank God, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Praise God. While we're standing today, thank God, let's just understand this one thing. It all starts with a commitment. It all starts with just saying, hey, thank God, not what I want but what God wants in my life. And the best place for that to start is at an altar. Thank God. And I thank God for the day that I made my way to an altar with a made-up mind. He's God. As a young person, I went to the altar many times and said, I'm going to live for God, only to walk out and not live for God. But there was a day when it was different, and I made up my mind. Thank God. From this day forward, thank God, it's going to be different. Praise God. And for sure, I haven't been perfect. And for sure, I've made a bunch of mistakes along the way. But there was a heart that was fixed that I'm going to live for God. Thank God. Just knock me down, but I'm getting back up because I'm going to live for God no matter what it takes. And so today, it's no different. Thank God. God wants you to lead your family in prayer. He wants to lead your family in worship. He wants to lead your family in being involved in the work of God. Thank God. No more me first. No more living for yourself. Thank God, and putting yourself before your family. But somewhere you make up your mind. Thank God, whatever I have to lay aside, I'm going to lay aside because I want to set a path that my family can follow. And I know that they're going to be safe. And so for some, it may mean no more drugs. For some, it may mean no more alcohol. For some, it may mean no more temper tantrum. Thank God, for others, whatever it is, you know what it is that you really need to lay on the altar today. Thank God. It means setting aside both some time and a place to seek after God's will and seek God's kingdom. Thank God. It means becoming a servant, thank God, and leading by example. Thank God. It means, thank God, no more me, thank God, but it's all about them. Thank God. It's learning that true joy, thank God, in living is living for others and not trying to get what we want, but trying to help them receive what they need. Thank God. And the more things that you get 
Hey, God, just the more headaches that you have. And so sometimes you need to just thank God for the simplicity that he wants us to live in. Just the simple, the simplicity of just living, thank God, and having peace and contentment in our home and having peace and contentment in our lives. And so if you're here today, thank God, as a family, thank God, I'd like to invite you just to come and stand together as a family as we sing a song and we just kind of agree, uh, commit ourselves to God. I just want you to be first in my life. Thank God. And so if you're able today to come as a family, thank God, I'd like for you just, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be men on one side, ladies on one side. Just come and stand around the altars as a family. And we're going to just worship. I want to pray a prayer of blessing on you and your family today. Thank God as a group. And I want to just see what God can do. in this year.